to get even fancier. You thought it couldn't get any fancier. It's about to get even fancier with the WCW versus NWO sheet so as a fancy. couch cover. That's We've classy. We've got uh, uh, Grogu back there with the uh, the flat bill. <laughs> Nikki's wearing a dragon slash wizard shirt. <laughs> Miles Morales is on my hoodie. Damn. Shirty's CRT's a little dapper all boy. over the place. Shorty's dapper. Shorty is dapper and, and sweet and being a good little sausage dog right here. And we have an internet historian video to watch. And it's about drinking. I like drinking. Sometimes. I have had some bad experiences with alcohol. <laughs> I'm talking about bad bad ex but you know what it's like every social event every social situation yeah anytime you're going to congregate as an adult yeah people are like hey or not even are as you an adult are you losing yeah and i think that that's kind of fucked up um sometimes i don't feel like drinking i got shit to do the next day i can't waste the day feeling like shit yeah, because I always feel like shit the next always. day. You have somebody in your band that's straight edge. And I I'm like... I do, yes. And and he goes to gigs like like every weekend. Yeah. And I'm like, when I go out to something like that, like a show, I'm, I'm going to want a couple drinks. You know, I do enjoy the occasional beverage, but I've gotten to the point in my life where that is not my favorite party yeah. substance. No, it's not the booger sugar or anything crazy like that. No. But the Medicanas seems to be, you know, pretty uh, on par for what I'm trying to get down with. And it's okay to not drink alcohol. Because yeah. the thing is, like, it, there are people... Here's the weird thing for me. Is when people know, like, this guy has an alcohol problem. Or he's, you know, trying to get back custody of his kids. Or he's on probation. Or it's just not a good idea for this individual to drink alcohol yeah. and people are still like, why aren't you drinking? What's on my mind? It's yeah. like, I don't know because or, drugs and alcohol have ruined my life. Yeah. You know, like, or like the, the type of people who just like drink every weekend hard or yeah, like days in a row. Ha like I can, I can maybe do like a once a month situation maybe or like i just saw a, a, a someone that i knew who was like i did was dry january and i'm like i could go like three months, six years months. without Whatever. having a drink now of alcohol obviously water you drink like a I fish like, who's that dude from Hellboy Abe that lives in the tank and is just like, that's what you need to be. I, ha I have a medical condition. Yeah. It's not diabetes. I a have thirst. You're a thirsty, thirsty woman. I, I like water. And her lot. favorite flavor is Hat Guy. Oh, okay. Oh. Let's watch this video. So, yes, internet historian, even fancier, drinking. I'm ready for it. Hopefully, you're ready for it. Let's get into it. Brought to you by Incogni. All right, we've done theater, we've done painting, we've done wine, and now it's time to do some drinking stuff in general. And to start, <laughs> let us learn about the drinking cultures of the world. Oh. Welcome to my private jet. <laughs> Come on, kid, I got a lot to teach you about the world. Nice. Oh, shit. <laughs> we must learn all of the drinking customs of all the funny foreign places. Starting with where drinking was invented. The country of Uck. Uck. What? The trick is to jump just before you hit the ground. Observe <laughs> British people in their natural habitat. Here they do a thing called cheers, where they clink their glasses together before drinking. Cheers. The tradition dates back centuries, but the origin, why they started doing it, is somewhat unknown. No one knows. But we have a couple of theories. Theory one, poisoning. Yes. So imagine a situation like this. Two people who don't trust each other sitting down together at the pub. This guy then does something shady to the other guy's drink. Here you go. Did you poison my drink? Me? I would never. 
Well then, I'll pour a little of mine into yours, uh, and you can pour a little of yours into mine, and we'll both either be totally fine or both totally dead. No, no, nah. there's, there's no need to do that. <laughs> so that was the initial version, and then eventually they just kind of shortcutted it to, yeah, clink, clink, it's fine, I trust you. But that's probably a myth. So, theory number two. It makes sense, though. Ghosts. Right, in the Middle Ages, people were worried about spooky ghosts and spirits. So they'd do cheers very loudly to scare away the demons. The first also, one sometimes you'd better. spill some of your drink onto the table and the floor, and then that was like a little offering um, to the spirit. What? That makes sense. But that's sense. probably also not true. Yeah. The most likely answer is simply that everyone likes that sound. Ah, uh, very <laughs> satisfied. There's more. You know when someone drops a glass and everyone goes kind of silent, like, oh, you fucking idiot. Well, in yeah. the UK, instead, everyone goes, way in celebration. As a way to make fun of you, but also make you feel not so bad. Uh-oh. That's sweet. The BBC. <laughs> they have a whole organization for that now. We got to get out of here. We'll take my private cruise ship. BBC. Come, come, to yeah. Italy, oh. where they film the Mario movie. <laughs> Let me just park this here. Chai, this is actually real. Come this way to the <laughs> Leaning Tower of Pizza. Held up by the raw strength of a thousand tourists raw. posing for photographs. But did you know that Italians, no. when they say cheers, say chin chin? No, I didn't. Now, that is very funny to the Japanese, because in Japanese, chin chin means penis. <laughs> Germany next. Now here they do Bruderschaft, where you link your arms together when drinking. It's also kind of seen all over the world at weddings in particular, but only the Germans have a name for it. It symbolizes the end of formalities between two people. Hmm. But the Germans have a lot more. Now, when you clink glasses together with someone, you have to look them directly in the eye. Okay. And if you don't do it, you will be cursed with seven oh, years God, of battle no. sex, God. apparently. That's what's happened to it's me. It's not my fault. It's oh. the Germans. <laughs> Then okay. When doing shots in Germany, they okay. sometimes also go Zermit, <laughs> and you hold the glass near your belly, Zertit, and you hold it near your chest, and then Zum Sack, and you hold it near your, you know, no and then way. Zack Zack, and you drink. Now, on to Finland. Oh, they really? They keep it casual. They have a custom specifically for drinking alone. You're supposed to do it while loafing around in your underpants, and it's called Kalsari Kani, also known as underwear drunk. I'm right, ready like for it. Finland. So off to Canada. To get there, I booked us a private fishing trawler. It's so exclusive that even these fish, yes, they go to a private school. Oh my God. In Newfoundland, Canada, they have the Newfoundland Screech. <laughs> you take a shot of Screech and then you do the Screech. Goes like this. Is you a Screecher? And then you answer like this. Deed I am, me old cock, and long may your big jib draw. That's it. It's a pirate culture. Then they take a big fish, usually a cod, and they kiss it all the <laughs> Anyway, I'm kind of, I'm kind of no. busy, so uh, there's no more customs anywhere in the world. You can do some more, maybe uh, independent research yourself. I'll, I'll see you back in the field. Oh. End of part. Okay, this next section is on cocktails. <laughs> so it all started when we made this asset where the Irish character, he's shaking a cocktail at a frat party. And I turned to the editor and I went, wait a minute, that's a weird word. Why are they called cocktails? Yeah, no, seriously. And we started Googling it and we kind of went down a rabbit hole and it was actually really interesting. So here it is. Cocktails. In the 1700s, fuel prices were outrageous. Oh, so no, everybody used the horse. Now, horses weren't just used for travel. They were also used for work in the fields. Mm. So you would sometimes put a harness on a horse for plowing a field, right? Now, when you do that, its tail actually gets in the way. And so we have to do something about that thing. Think of it like the foreskin of the horse. You put it in the guillotine and everybody closes their eyes. No, Problem dude. solved. Now, this practice is called docking. It has a different meaning these days. 
So once the tail is docked, some say it's much easier to clean. But it also kind of looks like a chicken's tail, right? Hence, they would call these tails cocktails. So that's step one oh, in the story. Okay. But step what two. You've that? also got horse merchants, right? And they are a very shrewd bunch. They know that when they sell their horses, the customer wants very feisty and energetic animals. Someone who's buying a horse doesn't want one that's kind of sickly Ugh. or lazy or sleeping all the time, right? They need it for work. So how do you ensure, then, that your horse looks full of beans and moxie and some other stuff and has the maximum horsepower possible Get them drunk. when it's time to sell? Well, they would use this one quick hack. All the equestrians hate them. They would go over to their mortar and pestle, and they would throw in some chili, hmm, some ginger, and a few other spices, and just mix it all what? together. What? Then they would go over to the horse, and hold still, little fellow. No, no that's so much worse. Up into the no-no area. <laughs> Now, the horse doesn't like that very much, oh so it's kicking, God. it's going mad, and the bidders are all going, wow, this is a really great horse, it's got some spunk, I tell ya, I'm buying it. So the horse merchants made a whole bunch of money, and Holy everyone was shit. happy. Well, almost everyone. Almost everybody. <laughs> the end of step two. Now step three. No. Around the same time, you've got bartenders over in the saloon and they have just invented the science of mixology. They've realized that you can add Red Bull and lemon <laughs> juice to stuff and actually make alcohol not taste so bad. But when they added some ginger and spices and maybe a little bit of pepper, people went, oh, I know these. These are those horse suppositories. Cocktails, we'll call them. Glug, 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 glug. God. This is my new stuck. story. Every time, like, no, God. wow, that can't you think it's possibly too early for be true. Time? I don't think it's too early for ad time. Oh no, help me, Incogni Man. I signed up for discounts at a retail store and they won't stop sending me messages. Huh? I signed up to that website years ago. Why are they still <laughs> spamming me? Uh oh. <laughs> that would be my doing. I am. Data beast man. Oh no. Who will, Who will stop, stop him? him? It's me, <laughs> Incogni Man. What? He's got cogs Incogni for is the oh. service that tells a whole bunch of databases and people who have your data <laughs> and stuff to get fucking lost. It says, hey, do you have this email address? Well, lose it. Hey, marketer man, you can't use this phone number anymore. Instead of chasing them all up manually by signing up to Incogni, oh they God. send these legal requests wow. on your behalf to get you deleted from the internet. Let us do battle in my room. And then we teleport to the desert. I better follow him. Incogni portal. Good of you to finally join us. Cogni, yeah. dude. Well, I'm gonna stop you. Incogni lawyer powers, <laughs> legal threats, data removal tools, Consumer Privacy Act, data protection regulations, polite yet stern wording. Wow. It has created a Gundam. So go to incogni.com slash incognito. Sign up today and get 60% off an annual plan. I won't change numbers. <laughs> I won't change email addresses. I'll Are just simply... <laughs> Take him back. I can feel it working. My phone isn't ringing as often. My email inbox, it's less full with uh, just a whole bunch of My shit. My God. And I like the sun. I've got the clouds yeah. clear. My databases are getting too light. Oh, no. <laughs> He'll die of the cold eventually. <laughs> Pan up and it's an old man. He's uh -oh. like, not bad, kid. <laughs> I don't think so I would have gotten So go to incogni.com slash incognito uh, Sign up today and get 60% off an annual plan Add over Have you heard about the latest wow. dangerous trend? It's all over social media Wine mixed with watermelon A combination when mixed together makes a deadly poison What? Here we are in Argentina with what? a delicious watermelon now, let me chase it down with a glass of wine. No. What?
Okay, it's not true. But it's been a myth in South America for over a hundred years that you should never pair wine and watermelon together. No one quite knows why. Okay. But we dug and we dug and we were able to find a single source from an author, Facundo de Genova. And he says in probably Argentina, probably sometime in the 1800s, there was a small Catholic church and everything. Oh no, was Resident right. Evil. For a time. They grew wine for dinner and watermelon for dessert. Okay. Until one day. Something bad happened in no, their idyllic no. little town. A few men in the village started getting a bit... Mm, grabby. It was a whole Me Too thing, but it was the first Me Too. It was a Me One. No one quite knows who <laughs> did what to whom, but it was a big scandal, I tell you. And it kept happening. Oh no, what's happening to our beautiful our village? They said in their funny foreign accents. Now, <laughs> presiding over the village was a monastery. So the priests all gathered together at this monastery to figure out what the hell's going on with all this grabbiness. Yeah, this uh, town uh, sucks now, said the women folk. I hope you have uh, the plan to fix uh, this. Uh, uh, yes, of course we do. But first, we must figure out why the men are becoming so grabby. It has to be the Come watermelon. Guys, think outside the box. We the have to find something, to anything to blame except the people who actually did the thing. <laughs> so the priests began looking at the diets of the people in the village. Hmm, uh. the priest said aloud. One of the monks proposed a theory. Have you noticed that we grow a lot of grapes here? Yes. And have you noticed that we also grow a lot of watermelon? Yeah. Well, what if, you know, somehow <laughs> it makes the men folk grabby? That must be it. We must put a stop to this. Be it. But how? Well, let's tell them that if they drink wine and eat watermelon, they'll go to hell. Okay. What? So that's what they did. Perfect. Hear ye, hear ye. Do not drink wine and then eat watermelon. You'll go to hell. Oh, really? Uh, really? Uh, really? 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 I don't know that. <laughs> really? 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 And it worked. The assaults suddenly stopped. Hurrah. Wow. Although whether that was a coincidence, we don't actually know. Over time, however, the messaging kind of evolved because... Don't mix wine with watermelon isn't exactly a well-known Bible proverb, and people became less religious. So instead of, you'll go to hell, the line changed to, it's poison and you'll die. Oh no. And in Argentina, in some places, the myth still perpetuates. What? Now, is there actually any evidence at all that pairing wine and watermelon together really causes the mood? Kinda. Watermelon contains an amino acid, arginine, which partially transforms into nitric oxide, and then nitric oxide is a vasodilator. And vasodilators uh, do this. <laughs> Plus, wine also has polyphenols, and that also helps in the formation of nitric oxide. So, double this. But the effect from nitric oxide is actually very mild. Also, all of these foods have polyphenols and arginine in them as well. So pretty much everything has it. So, no, the effects are likely hugely overstated. So, mm. the moral of the story is... Don't grab people. Don't <laughs> grab <laughs> people! <laughs> this next section is on wine in the Bible. Sort of. Apologies if we got any details wrong. We mostly kept this section because we liked the pun on Eucharist. Jumping forward to Jesus. This <laughs> is his first recorded miracle. So, mm. Jesus and a whole bunch of his followers and stuff, they are invited to a wedding in Cana. Now, the waiter goes over to serve some guests some wine, and, uh-oh. It's empty. Mm. What do you mean it's empty? There's no more wine. No, wait, I've got a plan, says Jesus. <laughs> Bring me six big stone jugs, Spoilers. about 20 to 30 gallons oh. and fill them up to the brim with H2O. Now, check out this. And he does the finger thing. And then when they went to pour the water, suddenly it was wine. And it was the best wine that anyone had ever gallons. had. I didn't know that. And they go, oh, that's pretty good, Jesus. But have you got any other miracles? And he says, yes. Come on, we're going to do a supper. Now, I just everyone thought is thought gathered it was like around, a glass. and this is the point at which Jesus reveals, "By the way, 
One of you is very sus. I know one of you will betray me. Yeah, this and he is looks not at Judas, and Judas is kind of looking away. But then Da Vinci's like, "Guys, uh, I need you to." This the, that that's not how this happened. Okay. The wine miracle happened like way before. Chad says that met. word so funny. Miracle. 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 It, but th- it happened way before he even met Judas. So, no. Mm. This is the Last Supper. Not. Well, he said he skipped forward. No. Press play. To stay a still for the painting. So Jesus goes, watch this. And he takes some bread and wine and he says, look at this bread. This is my flesh. And everyone's kind of like, really? And he goes, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're Protestant, then just metaphorically. No, no, okay, look at this wine. It is my blood. Really? Quit making this so complicated. Here, have some. So he hands it to his disciples and they went, fantastic. I was peckish and thirsty. And he goes, yes, in fact, I shall call this little celebration a Eucharist or Holy Communion. It will be the practice of eating one cracker or piece of bread and drinking some wine. And if you eat the whole thing and drink the whole bottle, that's called a huge caress. Oh my God. Now, most Christians today take that as a symbolic thing, unless (laughs) you are Catholic. Now, they believe in what's called transubstantiation which means that the bread and wine literally turns into the body and blood of Jesus at the moment that they are consumed. However, it does still look like bread and wine, and they call that phenomenon appearance or accident. It has changed, but you just can't tell, except for sometimes when you actually can. Lantano, Italy, in the 8th century, there is a monk and he has been on r slash atheism for far too long. He is starting to have doubts about the blood and wine stuff, but he still has his monk r slash atheism. So he holds mass and he says the words of consecration. This is my body. This is my blood. This is my rifle. This is my gun. <laughs> and at that very moment, the bread turns into literal flesh in his hands. And the wine turned to blood. What? Jesus, Jason, man. holy shit to everybody in unison. And ironically, he went, "Oh, well, I should probably not eat this then." So instead, he kept it in this chalice thing. What oh is it? my a god! Clock? Anyway, there it remains still today, Ew. kept in the church of San Francesco. And now, a couple of years later, in the 1970s, like Professor Odaro Leone did not decides, like "Let me." do a bit of an experiment. So he took Uh a sample of the flesh and Uh he came to the conclusion that it was indeed real. Apparently, it was part of a heart valve and that the blood type was AB. The sample has not been analyzed since. However, it is officially recognized by the Roman Catholic Church. What? Here ends the reading. Okay. End part. Now, you might say, wow, That section really doesn't have a whole lot to do with wine. And in fact, you're just badly retelling a Bible story. (laughs) This final section we started making for the main channel when we found this massive court document and we thought, holy shit, this is a hell of a story. And we had all these ideas of it being like Witcher themed. And so there were quite a few like random Witcher assets. Just ignore that. But it just kept blooming and blooming into this bigger story and it got too long. And so here it is on Incognito. And here we begin in 1743. The birth okay. of Thomas Jefferson. Push, Mrs. Jefferson, push. <laughs> now, Tom Jeff. Yeah. He was involved with some TJ. politics. Yeah. Kind of sexy, but you're too late. He's dead. Oh, I've been but there. what's more important is he tried his hand at a lot of different hobbies. Architecture. He designed his own home in Monticello. He played the violin. He kept mockingbirds. He collected fossils. And, most relevant of all, he hoarded a culture. In his extensive garden, he kept 330 types of vegetables and 170 types of fruit. One of those fruits was grapes. So he tried his hand at viniculture. And while he was good at a lot of things, he never saw much success with making wine. So he mostly collected the stuff. Now, people naturally wondered, like, what happened to the wine he made and the wine he collected? Did he sell it all? Did he give it it. away? 
Did he attempt the huge caress? The huge Fast caress. forward, 1985. Meet German music producer Hardy Rodenstock. He is an avid wine collector. And he's tapping on the walls of old buildings in Paris, looking for some national treasures. On this occasion, the wall opened and my God. Okay. Sealed behind, he said that he found a collection of 24 bottles, dating all the way back to the 1780s, and... Holy shit. <gasps> look at that. THJ engraved right there on the glass. Thomas Thomas. Jeff. It seems like Mr. Rodenstock has stumbled upon Jeff's hidden collection. Mystery solved. And it would make sense that they wound up in France because Jefferson spent a number of years over there. Amazing. And into <laughs> Rodenstock's wine collection, they went. Now, Rodenstock's wine collection was something quite special, and he liked to show it off. So every year he would host tasting events that featured extremely rare wines. And he would invite all the most prominent German celebrities, such as the Hans brothers and Das Boot Was. and Death Stranding. Now, one of his guests was a guy named Michael Broadbent, the senior director for Christie's Auction House. Together, they cracked open one of the THJ bottles. Bottle THJ. number one. Broadbent said that the wine was delicious. Yup, these bottles are in perfect condition, he said. You should really auction these things. I run an auction, you should put them in there. Why not? Huh. Maybe I should, said Mr. Rodenstock. Maybe I should. But before they did that, they sold two of the bottles privately. Number two and number three. Mm. And they drank a fourth. On the 5th of December, 1985, they put up bottle number five for auction at Christie's. It was bought by Christopher Forbes for £105,000. Jeez. Which, at the time, meant it was the most expensive bottle of wine ever sold. But that wine wasn't to drink. Proudly, that thing sat on the Forbes shelf. So eventually to be put into the Forbes gallery in the exhibit on former presidents. And funnily enough, they actually put this bottle on display under a big industrial light and it oh, heated the thing something dude. fierce. And the heat ruined its drinkability, of course. In fact, so intense was the light that the glass expanded and the cork fell into the bottle. Some time passed. They celebrated the sale with another drink. Bottle number six, now gone. How many are there? And then they sold two more privately. In 1987, they drank bottle number nine. In 1988, they drank bottle number ten. And at this point, a new challenger enters the sea. The White Wolf of Palm Beach. They call him Bill Coke. Some say it's short for billionaire. He's a member of one of the wealthiest families in America. Yep. And he is also one of the world's most avid collectors of wine. So, they sell him a total of four bottles for $311,804. We're way over here on the graph at this point. So, gently, careful, careful now, he put them in his climate-controlled cellar. And he would show them off to his friends. Otherwise, Just him. here they remained for the next 17 years. Ooh. As the years ticked by, more bottles were sold and more bottles were consumed. Until there were none left. 2005. The four Coke bottles had sat around for a long time on the shelf. Doing nothing. When something new happened. The Boston Museum of Fine Arts was interested in displaying the bottles and wanted to trace the exact provenance. They found out they're fake. So Coke gets on the line with the Jefferson Foundation and he goes, oh, look, I don't mean to brag, but I'm about to have my bottles displayed at the Boston Museum. But I need just a little bit of verification. Could you tell me exactly where these bottles come from? And the Thomas Jefferson Foundation responded, oh, I'm afraid we can't do that. We don't think they're real. Ha! Ah! Ah! In fact, you're not oh. the only person to call about this. What? Yes, it was in the 80s. You should a have done that Mr. Before. Broadbent, I believe, of Christie's Auction House called up trying to verify the bottles so that he could sell them. But we looked through our comprehensive historical no records and found no them. mention of these bottles. Here's a letter we sent saying that we couldn't verify them. And they're probably fake. But, 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 he sold those bottles to me. Bah, bah, bah. 
Damn. Now, back to 1776. Now, here's a thing you should know about Jefferson. Let's just say, if he was around today, he would play a lot of Factorio. He was, you know. And I have the largest collection of Funko Pops in the world. And that meant that his record keeping was very meticulous. All of his anime was ordered alphabetically. And so too were all the things that he ever purchased, including wine. Ay ay ay. So that's my story, Mr. Pepsi. <laughs> and those bottles are probably fake. When Coke hears about this, he hangs up the phone Mr. and hits Pepsi. speed dial on his pager or something, and he, I need to assemble a team, a team of investigators. The Avengers. Mr. Rodenstock lived in Germany, so Coke's investigators scoured the countryside for clues, and eventually they found a lead. They managed to track down five German residents who claimed to have done engraving work for Rodenstock ah. in the past. They said, hey, have you seen these bottles before? And they went, oh yeah, we have. We did those. And all five were certain that the THJ engravings were done by an electric power tool. Oh. Every one of these 24 bottles of Jefferson wine were fake. Big fat phonies. Son of a Allegedly, bitch. allegedly, allegedly. So Bill takes all of this evidence to court and Rodenstock is summoned, but he doesn't show up. So Bill <laughs> wins in absentia and is awarded a million bucks. Oh. In the end, Bill never received any money from Rodenstock. But to Bill, it was about sending a message more than receiving any money. I'm coming after you. And it's just one battle of many that Bill has fought against counterfeit wine. In 2008, Coke filed a consumer fraud lawsuit against the Chicago Wine Company, which was later settled out of court. Another time, Coke spent $3.5 million buying nearly 2,700 bottles of wine from Zaki's auction house. Almost a third of a million dollars worth was fake. The auction house settled out of court, but the seller was told to pay $379,000 oh, in damages and another $1,000 for every bottle. But then the next day they went, you know what, we thought about it. This jury has decided to award you $12 million oh. in punitive damages. Jackpot, said Mr. Coke, I'm rich. But a year later, the court changed its mind and awarded Coke only $711,000. Okay, so this guy's like a one-man army, and he's going around <laughs> trying to scare the shit out of anyone who's selling fake wine. Oh, you've got expensive rare wine, do you? Uh, yes. Maybe. Yeah, I'll buy it then. Yeah, but no, uh, yeah, I'll buy it. No, it's fine. It's genuine, is it? Yeah, you're saying it's genuine. Yeah, definitely. And then he goes and he inspects it, then finds it's fake, and then goes, yeah, I knew all along, stupid. Lawsuit time. <laughs> By doing this, he's very slowly cleaning up the market. After all of these investigations, Bill has spent around $35 million what? tracking down fake wine. Because that's, that's what the world Coke needs. But was ready to lay down his weapons. He sold off a big chunk of his collection, and it sold for $22 million dollars which means he likely did not break even. So consider giving to his GoFundMe. No. <laughs> consider giving to his GoFundMe. Now this is actually just a very small part of the story. This scandal ended up making such waves across the wine industry that they decided to make a movie about it. Based on the Benjamin Wallace book, The Billionaire's Vinegar. And it was set to star Brad Pitt. No wait, mm. now it's Matthew McConaughey. Oh. No wait, it looks like it's canceled. <laughs> All right, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Four more to go, but we've already started in on the regular type stuff in case you don't love fancy. Okay, bye. Dude, just imagine being able to just like burn $35 million yeah. in a passion project. What, he got 22 of it back? Yeah. You know, um, so I mean, it's not all of that, but a, a million. I couldn't imagine taking $10,000 and blowing it. Like... I can't blow $500. No, you can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, the Koch brothers, aren't they the ones that in the movie, The Campaign, that's who they're making that's fun of? Making that's what fun I of. thought. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're very much like, we're going to further our interests by undermining uh, democracy with, you know, Throwing money around and, and having people go. $35 million. What could you do to help the world? A lot of with things. With $35 million. Dollars. 
an individual a lot 35 of 35 million dollars i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna buy one and i'm gonna figure out which one of you are bakers and imposters and then i'm gonna sue you for more money like yeah goddamn shorty yeah, um, he's sprawled out right the here. The thing that got me was the cocktails. I can yeah, never say that oh again my God, without thinking dude. of someone shoving their hand no, up a horse's their hand. ass. Spices no, in their hand I mean, up yeah. a horse's ass. Fuck. Ginger and chilies up a horse's ass. So that means like so the you precursor can make money. for Dr. Pepper was just like a horse anal douche. Because they made that shit to make, like, liquor and medicine taste better. So, for a cocktail. Dr. Pepper? I yeah. didn't know that. All I don't know why. It tastes horrible. All soda started as a mixture for liquor chaser. and medicine. Huh. Yeah. What about that? So, yeah. Um, soda is just... Um, so, you're anal, only or, supposed to drink a little dish. bit, not two liters at Whatever a time, like I've seen people do. Uranus. Um, shoo. Shoo. Um... It would probably smell bad. Yeah, you're right. So, something that I was like, I can't get him to pause the video. I'm just going to have to, like, mentally note and try uh -huh. to remember, which is really hard for me to do. But I yes. did it. And this is, people, people are going to be like, you're fucking so stupid. You were, they're going to time stamp this and be like, Nikki, <laughs> what is wrong with you? But I really don't know. And I need to look it up or I need to just ask. Okay. okay so i'm being vulnerable and sharing this so they were like talking about the horse's tail and how they chop it off and it looked Horrible. like okay is it though because is it just hair or is it like a tail there's part of it that's just hair because i always just thought it was just I don't know how, but they like, 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 like hair. Thing, like, like a boxer thing that, that they fling around. Haven't you ever seen a horse like fling its tail to get flies yeah, to get away? Like a cow, so yeah. it looks like it maybe like a cow tail. I don't know. I don't either. I'm gonna. I'm what gonna... does a horse's tail bone look like? Not bone. What does a horse tail look? like? Like without hair, somebody else already googled. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of just oh. Okay. What does it look like? I'm trying to find one. You told me like to stop this. looking. Yeah. See. Oh, so when they cut it, it really is like cutting yeah, a that's limb what I'm off. Yeah, like a tail bone. Ew. Yeah, that's fucked up, dude. I thought it was just hair. No. Oh. But like, it's not like the full length. There's hair growing yeah, off yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, dude. That would be crazy. That whole situation was just like, no, nah, dude. There's so much about. And we farms. still call it that. Yeah, I know. But we just say dumb shit because, like, why change it? Why question it? We're trying to get <gasps> fucked up. We're not really thinking about where well, that now I will. came from. Now I will. Now, yes. The internet historian will warp the way your mind works around a lot of things. Hey. But, um, why were, like, farmers just are sticking their arms up animals' asses and shit all the time? <laughs> Well, they like like on Jackass. I mean, they're like artificially they, inseminating stuff. They're like de pooping stuff. They're like they're just like de pooping. I don't think never, they de poop oh, them. Listen, de poop listen, animals. Listen, I don't I, think so. I, yes, they do. I saw this lady put on a full arm glove. Like artificial insemination. No, this was not artificial. It insemination. was constipated. Yes, and she. Pulled the shit Scooped, out of it. Like, to the shoulder. Fiddling. Scooped it out. And then it just came out like a goddamn... Uh, like a horrible situation. You know, like a mudslide. Just horrible situation. I bet it felt better. You know, it's a, it felt horrible for me to see it. This is disgusting. But I, and I showed Chad this video because it popped up on my TikTok once. But it was like this cow 
that was this has nothing to do with the video this cow is like in miserable pain oh, no. and it like i guess got like bloat like its stomach was just full of air um why, why and then they like that? take this like kind of like a cookie cutter and they just like punch it in their stomach and like a bunch of air but at the beginning it's like liquidy gas like disgusting um flings out of the the hole out and then they just deflates and then they're like okay so you're thomas good to go jefferson, did you know that that thomas jefferson was said to have had the autism yeah actually i did yeah well, uh, so that maybe that's why he has all the lists and all. They the... said that this motherfucker was wild, that he used to run for several miles, read a whole damn book, go and do manual labor, sit down and ride a, a whole bunch, eat, drink, do all this. He grew pot, all this other yeah. shit, and then would sleep for like three or four hours and get up and do it again. Yeah, that's every day. I, I need a lot of. I, I need a good amount of sleep he every day. Healthy eight to ten hours. Like the people, fucking hated him. From well, what I've read and what I've heard people talk about on documentaries and things like that about Thomas Jefferson, he annoyed the shit out of everybody. Like most of the founding fathers were annoying as fuck. Like, he was up there on the shit list. So was um, Benjamin Franklin. There was a plot to kill him. I because think I they that. thought he would run his mouth so much that yeah. he would tell yeah. on them and they would be hung for treason before the revolution could even happen because he would get drunk yeah, and he start got talking up. shit to everybody yeah. about what they were doing. And they were like, no, we're going to have to kill him or he's going to tell on us all. He, they could have just like took his tongue. Thomas know? Jefferson well, no, just then like could write. didn't give a shit who he was talking to. Like he was like, "Nah, this is how it is." I get yeah. it. And then look at the, I get look it. At like John Hancock. Okay, you're talking about a group of settlers in the colonies who are saying we are going to go against the British Empire. Yeah, and he said. When they come looking for who started this, I want my name to be the biggest pop. He was fucking crazy. He's flexing. All, yes, all of these guys were just like, fuck around and find out. Yeah. And uh, Thomas Jefferson was definitely that guy. I bet you he was mad as all fuck that his wine sucked. Because <laughs> you've got all They these said it was good. No. They said his wine was horrible. He wasn't ever any good at it. He never could oh, get any good wine. The, the fake wine was yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But like Thomas Jefferson was probably pissed. That's another thing. As soon as they were like, yeah, you could sell one bottle for this crazy amount. Uh -huh. Okay. Then you're going to pop a bottle every year. Look, Bullshit. look, 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 look. Yes, they will. There, there was even some shit I heard about one time, speaking of fancy things, it was a chocolate that I think was in Japan where a lot of people would eat it with the wrapper because the wrapper was gold. And so they would have like, you know, because gold, pure gold is really malleable. It's like super easy to like bend like a, and well, Like a gold leaf? Like, you know how No, they... I'm talking about it was like gold. That's so stupid. So they would eat it. You're just going to shit it out. Right. It's... But people were in, like trying to sift through to get this gold. Like, yeah. I don't know if that's a rumor or not. But I've just heard all kinds of crazy shit about like the Me at 14 crust. with Goldschlager being like, hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> Me going to Burger King and get my gold-plated Pokemon cards. Oh, oh shit. I'm going to be a millionaire. Damn. But, uh, yeah, that was incognito mode, even fancier drinking. I thought this video was good. Yeah. I'm going to give it a like. You probably should too. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. I know that we had fun doing a reaction. It's been a long time. Learned Glad some to things be I didn't here. Know. That's a fact. Take it easy, y'all. See you guys. Bye.